Man, Michael Keaton loves playing characters with wings, doesn't he? Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Spider-Man Homecoming. So Spider-Man Homecoming is directed by John Watts. And the film stars Tom Holland, Michael Keaton, Marissa Tomei, Donald Glover, Zendaya, and Robert Downey Jr. So Spider-Man Homecoming is about when Peter Parker has to juggle his life between being a high school kid and being Spider-Man. And of course, after the events of Captain America Civil War, he really wants to prove to Tony Stark that he could be more than just Spider-Man. So that way he could be working with the Avengers but of course that gets in the way when the vulture has something very diabolical going on and Spider-Man has to do what he can to stop the vulture so I was of course interested in Spider-Man Homecoming I wouldn't say I was overly excited for this film but I was very interested in it because I thought Tom Holland did a great job playing Peter Parker slash Spider-Man in Captain America Civil War for the 30 minutes of screen time that he had in that film and I was really happy to see him have his own film plus the fact that it's now Sony working with Marvel since obviously the Amazing Spider-Man movies haven't been financially or critically successful. And plus the cast here just looks really great. And I have to say, Spider-Man Homecoming, I had a lot of fun with it, as I was hoping to and as I expected. I had a ton of fun with this film, but I also love this film. It actually ended up being a little bit better than I actually expected. And one of the things that made Spider-Man Homecoming really stand out to be this great Spider-Man movie is the fact that we see Peter Parker being a normal high school kid. Not only is he a superhero having to save the city, but he is also a high school kid dealing with normal high school stuff like having a crush on a girl or having to make sure he's doing good in school, getting good grades. But of course the scenes when it focuses on Peter being Spider-Man and saving the world and stopping these criminals and him trying to figure out a way to stop the vulture. I really like that as well. We see in Peter's point of view that he really does want to help people but because he is a teenager after all he doesn't exactly know everything that goes on in the world and I really loved how the film explored that it's very nice that he does want to help out but it's obvious that he has a lot more to learn and speaking of Spider-Man himself Tom Holland it should be no surprise when I say that he is great as his character he really is just so terrific as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man when he is just playing Peter Parker and he's not in a Spidey suit he does a really great job. He really embodies being a, a high school kid. And when he's Spider-Man, he does a very good job. And when he handles the humor too, because one of the things that makes Spider-Man is when he adds very quick humor. And I thought he did a very good job of handling the humor. And speaking of the humor right now, I have to say that this is a very funny movie. A lot of the times I did find myself laughing watching Spider-Man Homecoming because the humor was very well done and that's just thanks to how great the writing is here. This is a very well written Spider-Man film. The writers really had a great understanding of what Spider-Man was all about, what this overall world is all about, and how interesting they made all of these characters. I thought Zendaya was really great in this film and although she's not in it a whole lot, she does do a very great job and I thought her character actually did have some nice little humor. And I look forward to seeing Zendaya and more stuff in the future because for this being her first film, she did do a really good job. Jacob Betalon, who plays Ned, Peter's best friend, I thought he did a very good job playing this role too. And although I will get into the character a little later, I did think as far as performances go, he did do a really good job. Laura Harrier as Liz, Peter's love interest, I thought she did do a very good job. Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark slash Iron Man, he's really good here. I mean, he's always really good as his character, but you know, he continues to show his goodness 
here in Spider-Man Homecoming. And what Spider-Man Homecoming did a very clever job of doing is not making this the Iron Man show. Tony Stark slash Iron Man has limited screen time, limited screen time. He's in this movie for the right amount, not a whole lot, but he is in this film when he needs to be in it. And I thought that was clever because I will admit that was one of my little worries with this film was if Tony Stark was going to steal the spotlight from Spider-Man. And he doesn't. He's in it when he needs to be. He served his purpose. And I loved how he served as a father figure for Peter Parker. I did really like those scenes between him and Peter. They were definitely some of my favorite scenes. You even have John Favreau here back as Happy Hogan, who I don't recall having seen since Iron Man 3. So good to see John Favreau play this character again because one, I love John Favreau not only as a director but as an actor too so it's really cool just seeing him on screen and just seeing the Happy Hogan character was really refreshing and and surprisingly he actually has more screen time than Tony Stark uh, yeah he's actually in this movie more than Robert Downey Jr. himself which I did not expect but I thought it was really cool, honestly. Marissa Tomei, while not one of the best things about Spider-Man Homecoming, she is pretty good for what she's given for sure. It's just that Aunt May didn't necessarily stick out like in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, but you know, for what she did have, I did think she was pretty good. I also did really like Tony Revolori as Flash Thompson. I thought he did a really good job. I know some will be bothered by the fact that this character is played by a different race. But personally, I did find the take interesting. And something I do want to give this movie a ton of credit for is the diversity. I love the fact that there's actually different kinds of races of these group of students throughout this film. I thought it was very nice for them to actually acknowledge that and I thought it did work honestly for this film but of course I have to talk about Michael Keaton as the vulture this guy is intimidating as hell I am not lying when I say in my personal opinion Michael Keaton uh, as the vulture is one of the best villains in the MCU like what I just said he's very intimidating and his motivation for why he's doing this even if you don't agree it's very clear and i just really got behind this character there's one scene i'm not gonna say what it is but this one scene really had me shaking and michael keaton's delivery in that scene was perfect absolutely perfect. I was kind of worried that he would be wasted here, but thank goodness he was not wasted. Michael Keaton really gave it his all as the vulture. Now as far as the direction goes, this is from John Watts and he's known for directing movies like Cop Car or Clown. I haven't seen either of those films personally, so I can't really comment on him as a director. As a director of this film, however, I could definitely say that he did a really great job. He really made me feel like I was a part of this world. The scenes when you see Spidey stopping the criminals or when you just see Peter at high school, he really did make me feel like I was in this world. There were a lot of really great shots in this film. The cinematography, I have to say too, is absolutely beautiful. Very beautiful cinematography as expected with these MCU movies. They honestly all look really great and Spider-Man Homecoming is no different. It's a beautifully shot movie. There's so many great wide shots throughout this entire film. The score in this film is really great too. And it's beautifully composed by Michael Giacchino who is hands down one of the best music composers working today. This guy just honestly continues to really impress me with his work. And something I did really love about Spiral and Homecoming is like I said, because it does focus quite a bit on Peter Parker's high school life, it really does give you that John Hughes vibe. I really appreciate John Hughes as a filmmaker and what he does with his movies. And really, when you watch Spider-Man Homecoming, you definitely do get that John Hughes 
feel and you could definitely tell uh, John Watts was totally going for that vibe because of one particular scene that is one of John Hughes's most famous movies I'm not gonna say what it is but if you guys have seen the movie you know what that one John Hughes film was where they made a joke about it and they actually showed like the actual movie after that certain joke happened which for me was actually very funny. And I have to say, although I'm not entirely a fan of the character of Ned, I did really like what he did for Peter, mainly when we get to the third act. The third act, when we do see what Ned is doing for Peter, I did really like that. And the action sequences in Spider-Man Homecoming, I cannot forget, are very well filmed. They actually kept me at the edge of my seat. The camera wasn't really shaky, maybe a couple of times but it's pretty minor besides that i thought the camera work was very steady during the action sequences and i just thought john watts did a beautiful job of really directing these action sequences and while this movie does have its serious moments it never sucks the fun away there's enough serious moments for uh, you to get invested in the story but it's not enough where you're like you're not having fun anymore because Spider-Man Homecoming even with its serious moments is a fun and I mean really fun ride now as far as problems do go with Spider-Man Homecoming there is this Ned character and he's pretty weird with me he's kind of half and half there's times where I do really like this character, and then there's times where I personally couldn't stand this character. He actually did annoy me quite a bit, especially when he finds out about Spidey's identity. Um, yes, you can make the argument that's how a friend would actually react if you were to find out about his secret identity, but the Ned character honestly did get on my nerves. He does calm down a little bit luckily, but in that one part and a few other moments too, I'm just like really, the biggest really moment was in that gym scene. I, di I didn't really like that. As far as Liz goes as Peter's love interest, I did not think she was that interesting to be honest. Now it's not like she's horrible, she's just not that engaging and I didn't really feel this romance between her and Peter. And yes, while the film does try to do something interesting with her later on, I, it still didn't really make me care for the romance or even the character in general. That part of the movie just didn't really work for me. Sometimes the humor does fall a little flat. A lot of times the humor really does work, but there's times where the humor does fall a little bit flat for me. There are certain characters that are very underused in the film that I wish they could have had more screen time where they could have been explored more, especially Donald Glover. I did really like Donald Donald Glover for what he had in this movie but I do think he was very very underused and they really could have done more with him. And I do think the film drags just a little bit. Overall Spider-Man Homecoming is a great Spider-Man movie. I love this movie. I had a blast watching it. It did a very good job of showing both the high school life and the hero life for Peter Parker. The action sequences are a lot of fun. The movie is just very well directed by John Watts. It's a beautifully shot movie. I love the John Hughes vibe that this movie gives the score is just really great and I do think that the acting just all around was really really great and it does make me look forward to seeing more of this character and not to mention that Michael Keaton played one hell of a villain easily one of the best villains in the MCU Spider-Man Homecoming is definitely one of the best Spider-Man movies Spider-Man 2 is obviously still the best Spider-Man movie but Spider-Man Homecoming on its own is still a great movie and I'm gonna give it three and a half out of four stars so you guys in the comments down below let me know what did you think about Spider-Man Homecoming. This is 22 Tiger Dude here and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.